despite great growth and understanding in the community and the force of urgency and conventions designed to destigmatize mental health in the community, old habits die hard. Mental health issues persist along with the stigma surrounding them and people that seek mental health services. To some degree, even people that work in the mental health field face a level of stigma and negative association. Things are changing, but that change seems to be moving at a snail's pace, especially when compared to what is needed in the community. This week on Lessons from the Screen, we will not be taking the traditional angle with regards to mental health, that angle being focused on all the ailments and potential services. We will be focusing on what mental health actually means. What does it mean to be mentally healthy? We feel like the mental health conversation can't be had until this simple narrative is understood. In this episode, we will be talking about and answering a simple question. What is mental health? Lessons from the screen is back, presenting these facts with a little opinion laid on top of that. And in August, it's on the Freedom Train Network, we talking mental health because it needs work. Everybody ready to move whenever their body hurts, but when their mind is broken, they don't even drink. I guess it's crazy to make sure that you're not, and that's why we talking about this here right now. And I welcome to Lessons from the Screen, the show where we give you a review of whether or not a particular show, information, whatever it is that you can get through any particular screen of any particular kind is worth your time. We waste our time, our energy, and our brain power so that you don't have to. You're welcome. And as always, Lessons from the Screen is sponsored by Pax Inc., a black activist and advocacy organization, as well as a think tank with the purpose of increasing the quality of life for black people in America through education, culture shift, and economics. You can check them out at www.pactsinc.org. That's packsync.org. Leave a donation, volunteer, take a survey, spread the word of mouth, shop on Amazon Smile using the Packsync uh, uh, link so that they get paid when you do it. There are a bunch of different ways that you can get involved to help them out because they are doing whatever they can to get involved to help you out. So we would appreciate any and all support that you can offer to them because they've been great sponsors for us. With that being said, we go back to the question posed in the opening act of the show. What is mental health? So I had come up with this idea and i was going to do all this and do all that and say all this and say all that and then i decided to do some research into everything that i was going to say do and blah 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 and i came to the realization that all that was unnecessary because other organizations had already done a lot of the things that i was doing a lot of the things that i was thinking about they had already said and a lot of the initiatives and things that i wanted to present they've already presented and it's usually like that. It's usually if you search hard enough, you can find someone that's already come up with your idea, your idea and is farther along in the process than you are. Not always, but usually that's the case. So in this case, I'm going to use the World Health Organization's uh, constitution when it comes to mental health awareness. Now, their constitution states, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Now, an important distinction is made here because health is not the absence of illness. Just because you're not sick doesn't mean that you're healthy. It just means that you're not sick. So, the same thing applies when it comes to mental health. Just because you don't have a mental health issue, illness, disorder that's been diagnosed, doesn't mean that your mental health is okay. It doesn't mean that you're mentally healthy. You see, when you are healthy, you have everything that you need to function in a normal and balanced way. Now, the more unbalanced things become, the more we begin to see signs and symptoms that would illustrate that you are, in fact, ill. 
And in fact, illness is nothing more than when the, the system becomes extremely imbalanced and those imbalances begin to manifest themselves physically or mentally in such a way that they can be spotted and identified by other people. But just because you aren't at the point where those things are manifesting themselves doesn't mean that you're not sick. Mental health, according to the WHO, is the state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. It goes on to say mental health is fundamental to our collective and individual abilities as humans to think, emote, interact with each other, earn a living, and enjoy life. On this basis, the promotion, protection, and restoration of mental health can be regarded as a vital concern of individuals, communities, and societies throughout the world. Now, again, I go back to that second section that I read, mental health is a state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. Now, if we hold those four things up, realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively, and able to make contributions to his or her own community. How many of us know people that don't meet all four of those, those qualifications? How many of us can't meet all four of those qualifications? How many of us realize our own abilities? How many of us don't? How many of us sell ourselves short? How many of us, we can all easily identify somebody that's overestimating themselves, but how do you distinguish humbleness from low self-esteem? How many of us can actually do that? How many of us can cope with the normal stresses of life? How many of us, and by coping, we don't mean finding a negative outlet for your negative energies, emotions, and stresses. We mean finding a healthy way to deal with what's going on in your life so that you don't explode or implode. How many of us have an unhealthy relationship to social media? How many of us have an unhealthy relationship to our favorite TV show, to our favorite music? How many of us have an unhealthy relationship to various substances out there that can alter our states of mind? How many of us can work productively? I don't, you don't even have to add anything else to that, you know, without, we don't, we don't even have to add in without the use of Adderall, or we don't even have to add in without the use of, of other self-medications and other ways of getting yourself in a state that's different from your normal state so that you can work productively. How many of us can just wake up, or even if you've already been awoke, how many of us can just sit down and focus and work? And how many of us are able to contribute to our communities? How many of us do contribute? How many of us see ourselves as part of a community? You see, this isn't just about sickness and illness. This is about you being a normal, healthy, about, not normal, because there's no such thing as normal, but in, in America, normal is mentally fucked up. But this is about being a balanced, emotionally stable individual that recognizes themselves, recognizes themselves as a part of a community and sees that they are needed in order to continue that community and the society and the civilization in which they live. And especially in the black community, those four components are definitely not being met. We can have all the discussions we need about why they aren't being met. But the fact remains that for the vast majority of us, we struggle with those components. Determinants of mental health. So this, this, in this document that I'm reading is right off of the World Health Organization's website. Multiple social, psychological, and biological factors determine the level of mental health of a person at any point in time. For example, violence and persistent socioeconomic pressures are recognized risks to mental health. 
the clearest evidence is associated with sexual violence. Poor mental health is also associated with rapid social change, stressful work conditions, gender discrimination, social exclusion, unhealthy lifestyle, physical ill health, and human rights violations. They are specific psychological and personality factors that make people vulnerable to mental health problems. Biological risks include genetic factors. Now, in reading that, Again, we go back to that second section. Poor mental health is also associated with rapid social change. In black America, over the last hundred years, we've gone from being slaves to being indentured servitude to being, uh, being put in, in, in peonage bondage to, to the prison industrial complex, to the civil rights era, to superficial change, to now... Uh, to a quote unquote, and I never believed this was the case, but a quote unquote post racial society to now we're at the point where we are recognizing all of that was a lie as we are being shown more and more and more that what's been happening to us in our communities, things that we thought were isolated incidences, are actually real occurrences that happen pretty regularly all across the nation. And I know many of us will say, and many of us have known that this was always the state of america there are great many people who are experiencing a racial wake up so when we come to rapid social change that's five or six different states of social being in the last hundred years stressful work conditions don't even don't even need to dig into that gender discrimination our black women suffer gender discrimination just as bad if not worse no not if not worse they suffer the worst form of gender discrimination here in america because not only are they women but they're black women so they have to deal with gender and racial issues social exclusion i don't have to go any further unhealthy lifestyle i don't really have to go any further physical ill health we know that we get sick and human rights violations. All of those things we as a community deal with on a consistent and continuous basis. We as a community live in a state of poor mental health. Our culture has normalized this existence of poor mental health because the, your culture has to normalize your, your, uh, your average state, if you will, in order for you to be able to survive within the world you live in if your culture doesn't normalize negative behavior and all you see is negative behavior you will destroy yourself and we all have a survival instinct not to do that so in a lot of cases we have begun to embrace a lot of negative qualities a lot of bad traits traits that we've learned traits that we've developed in order to cope with society even in terms of the bi biological risk included when, we're, when they're talking about genetic factors, we get back into this discussion of epigenetics and how the different things that you've experienced in your environment shape your genetic code. And those changes made to your genetic code get passed down to your children. So that if you experience severe trauma at any point in your life before you have kids, on a, on, a, on a genetic level, your DNA is changed and that change is passed on to your child. So when we begin to talk about genetic curses, when we begin to talk about generational curses, generational memory, genetic memory, all that stuff, all of that is real and is encompassed in the science of epigenetics. So, again, when we're talking about mental health, we're talking about your ability to recognize yourself, to cope with normal stresses, to work productively, and to make a contribution to your community. When we're talking about the determinants of mental health, we're talking about poor mental health being associated with rapid social change, stressful work conditions, gender discrimination, social exclusion, unhealthy lifestyle, physically ill health, and human rights violations. So in, in, the, in the last section of this document that I'm going to get into, we're going to go ahead and read it now. Mental health promotion and protection. It says mental health promotion involves actions that improve psychological well-being. 
This may involve creating an environment that supports mental health, an environment that respects and protects basic civil, political, socioeconomic, and cultural rights is a fundamental it is fundamental to mental health. Without the security and freedom provided by these rights, it is difficult to maintain a high level of mental health. National mental health policy should be concerned both with mental disorders and with broader issues that promote mental health. Mental health promotion should be mainstreamed into government and non-governmental policies and programs in addition to the health sector. It is essential to involve the education, labor, justice, transport, environment, housing, and welfare sectors. Specific ways to promote mental health include early childhood interventions support to children, socioeconomic empowerment of women, social support for elderly populations, programs targeted, targeted at vulnerable people, including minorities, indigenous peoples, migrants, and people affected by conflicts and disasters, mental health promotional activities in schools, mental health interventions at work, housing policies, violence prevention programs, community development programs, poverty reduction and social protection for the poor, anti-discrimination laws and campaigns, promotion of the rights, opportunities, and care of individuals with mental mental disorders. Now, in this section, I'm going to go back again to the second thing I read. An environment that respects and protects basic civil, political, socioeconomic, and cultural rights is fundamental to mental health. Without the security and freedom provided by these rights, it is difficult to maintain a level of mental health. And in this statement, and I'm reading from the WHO for a reason, because I know a lot of people, um, unless it comes from a source that they find credible, they won't, they won't acknowledge what you're saying. And we have had plenty of black scholars and plenty of black organizations make that same statement on a regular basis, but we as a people refuse to take it. So here it is, the World Health Organization basically saying the exact same thing. Now, let me ask you, do we have an environment that respects and protects our basic civil rights, our basic political rights? I mean, when we get into civil rights, we're still seeing court systems that, that violate us and, and people that get off for violating us and institutions that get off for violating us because we're black. We have, when you get into political rights and protections, we have a president as well as National Congress and many of us have uh, state legislators that are willing and able and desiring to chip away at our political rights by doing what they can to eat away at our right to vote. When you get into socioeconomic rights, we have no socioeconomic rights. When you get into cultural rights, again, we're talking about a society where uh, it was it was all the way up until this year or last year illegal for black women to wear their nat natural hairstyles in the military. Kids were getting kicked, kids still are getting kicked out of school for wearing natural hairstyles to schools and certain private schools, certain charter schools, certain public schools. So in what world can we say that an environment exists that protects our basic rights. And this is why our culture has had to shift in such a way as to normalize a lot of our negative practices, a lot of our negative ideologies, and a lot of our negative viewpoints in order for us to survive. I tell people all the time, our greatest ability, our greatest superpower, if you wanna say black people are superheroes, our greatest superpower is our ability to adapt. Our ability to adapt and be flexible to the world around us, the environment that we live in and the situations that we find ourselves in. And it's in those abilities to that, that great ability to adapt that we have begun and we have done a really, really good job of adapting to systemic white supremacy. And that has created in it a group of people who have become blind to the world around them. That is developed within it a group of people who have found it necessary for survival purposes 
to assist in the negative treatment, the disparaging treatment of their own people. And we can't blame them for that. That adaptation was made so that we could survive. Some of us have had the ability or had the, 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 wonderful, the wonderful opportunity to be exposed to certain information and certain people that have changed us. But we can't be mad at other people who haven't had those opportunities and haven't been exposed to the same things that we have. So we're talking about living in a society that does not provide those safe spaces for us to even develop a state of positive self-imagery, much less developing a positive mental health viewpoint, developing a healthy mental health practices developing a healthy state of mental well-being and so when that it becomes incumbent upon us not only to recognize the system that we live in not only to recognize its shortcomings and its failures with regards to us and our state of being and our community and our culture but it also becomes necessary for us to begin to create those safe spaces those spaces where we can simply unwind and enjoy being alive enjoy our culture, enjoy being who we are. It becomes incumbent upon us to create those safe spaces wherever we can create them. Everyone's home should be a safe space, but sometimes you need larger public safe spaces where we can congregate together out in the open and just enjoy each other. Now, on the Freedom Train Network podcast series, on the Freedom Train podcast series, we we had a wonderful um interview with Dr. Huberta Jackson Lohman, who is the president of the National Black Psychologist Organization. And they have initiated something called Community Healing Days in Tallahassee, Florida. And that interview will come out uh, tomorrow, I believe it is, on the network. So look out for that. Uh, but that is a wonderful avenue that we could use towards growing and stabilizing our mental health in a positive manner and there are others out there this show isn't necessarily for figuring out what to do it's just trying to give you an idea of what mental health is because throughout all these conversations we rarely if ever talk about the very simple concept of mental health and people go around thinking i'm not crazy so i must be mentally healthy and that's simply not true so with that, I want to thank you for tuning in. This entire month of August is the Black Mental Health Awareness Month here on the Freedom Train Network. We hope that you appreciate it. We hope that you get involved not only in our conversations on our shows and on our on our page on the website and in the app, get the app, but also that you'll get involved out in your own community and start having these conversations with people about mental health, about being healthy, about finding positive outlets for your stress, about getting involved about making social connections. All of those things are needed and so much more. So again, I want to thank you guys for listening in. We did not do a trending Tuesday today because I looked over the, the uh, trending areas and they were all trash. Yes, they were trash. Utter and complete nonsense. Some about Angelina Jolie and a bunch of other celebrity gossip that I don't care about. So, it's great. Thank you again, and I will see you next week for the next episode of Lessons from the Screen. Lessons from the Screen is back, presenting these facts with a little love ping and lay it on top of that. And in August on the Freedom Train Network, we talk in mental health because it needs work. Everybody ready to move whenever they body hurt, but when their mind is broken, they don't even drink. I guess it's crazy to make sure that you're not, and that's why we talk about this here right now and I. Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in to Lessons from the Screen. Lessons from the Screen is brought to you by Pax Inc. Through the Freedom Train Network, you can find us on www.freedomtrainradio.com or on iTunes, Google Play Music, or Stitcher. Be sure to head to one of those places and leave us a review, and then be sure to head back to the website 
to let us know what you think about the show and communicate with us. Also, be sure to head to www.packsync.org and show some love and support for our sponsors. PackSync is doing big things in the community and trying to do more, always trying to do more. So be sure to head to the website. That's www.pactsinc.org. Donate, volunteer, become a member, talk about it, whatever. They can use your support. And once again, they are doing great things in the community. And as always, Lessons from the Screen has a frame of reference and perspective that is aligned with that of the black community. The things that we look at, whether it be on the Trending Tuesday or the regular Lessons from the Screen show, will always be looked at from the black perspective. So keep that in mind because we need more minds shaped into that perspective and trying to do things that we need done for ourselves. So with that in mind, again, thank you guys for listening again. Remember to tune in to the Freedom Train Radio. We have the app that's available that you can get from the website. It's in the Google Play Store. Sorry, it's not available on iTunes yet. We have the live internet radio. And we have more shows coming up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you guys for the next episode of Lessons from the Screen.